Hello, good morning, welcome back to the fish locker out on the boat. <sighs> oh, well, there's a positive. There's a little rainbow over there. <laughs> That's about where it ends. Yeah, we have a lot of, like, a lot of rain clouds moving through today. So we're going to end up dodging them. Hopefully, we've seen the worst of it. I've come out a little bit later than usual. Usually, I like to get out here at first light. But when I got up this morning, it was absolutely lashing it down. So I'm out here a little bit later. As you can tell, we've got a really strong westerly wind coming in today. I'm going to try and tuck in somewhere sheltered and try and do a bit of fishing at anchor. The first thing that we need to do now is we need to find some bait. We need to get some mackerel, some scad, some pilchard, something like that. So, um, well, you can see how bad the weather's been because we've got all these tankers in here, look. And there's a couple more. Yeah. Let's try and find some bait. Right, I've fished around for an hour and a half and I've caught three scad. That's three horse mackerel. I like this. So I can't afford to give it any more time. I'm going to head down now and I'm going to go and put the anchor down. The area I'm going to be anchoring today is around 30 to 35 metres. So I'm reckoning I'm going to have to put out about 70 metres of rope. We're only on neap tides at the meet, so I only need to use like two to three times the depth in rope. And because it's rough ground, I'm going to be using a grapple anchor. Now I've rigged this with a weak link, so if it gets stuck I can just trip it out backwards. This is going to be one of those days today. We haven't got very much tide, we've got quite a strong wind and it is like a quarter across the tide. So we are going to swing around a little bit. It might take me a while to get it all set right. Just bear with me. This is an Alderney ring and a buoy. This is used when we're hauling the anchor. I'll show you that hopefully at the end of the session. Because we've got about three hours now of the tide, three hours of it going one way, then we'll have half an hour of slack and then it'll start coming the other. I might have to change the anchor in position in like three hours time. I might have to pull it up and anchor on the opposite side of the reef. I have my rope measured out in lengths. Otherwise you never know how much you put over the side. <laughs> that anchor now, that's, that's very tight in and we have swung round into a decent position. Effectively, this means that I'm anchored backwards. I've got the anchor down here, in my stern cleat. I can get away with this because it's a small tide. If you're in a really strong tide, you need to be careful because effectively, I, I am anchored backwards. And the back of your boat is flat, whereas the front of your boat is like that. So it will, whereas the back, it'll just hit up against the waves. What I do now is I put a batten, a piece of wood on, on my rope. That stops the anchor boy sliding right to the front of the boat. That works twofold because if there's any swell instead of it reaching straight to the front of your boat which can snatch your anchor out your line comes up to the surface to a buoy and then along the surface of the boat so the swell is cushioned out by the buoy also by having this down the rope it stops the buoy from sliding right to the front of the boat so people can't see it Then let the rope go, we'll spin round. Yeah. I'm not saying that this is the best method for everyone to use, this is what I find works best for me on my boat. There we go, the boat will just swing right round now, we'll be facing back into the tide. tide sorry, no, <laughs> no we won't. We'll be facing back, head into the tide. So the wind, wind's going that way, tide's going that way, if we start swinging about that much, I can even put a drogue off the back, a sea anchor, to try and hold me in a bit of a more stable position, because otherwise we'll just swing around. But that looks good. Let's get some baits down. Oh, yeah, by the way, um, yeah, I did only catch three scad. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna keep some feathers over the side now to see if I can catch any mackerel, any pilchards, any scad, anything like that's coming past. I have got some scad to use to try and catch a ling. I've also brought some frozen squid to try and catch something else. 
so we'll put <laughs> put the feathers down on one side and put some uh, squid down on the other side just a little two hook scratching rig I'll show them once I've got them baited up <laughs> that's what's down there little tiny mackerel Now that, that doesn't feel like a mackerel. <laughs> if it is, it's a good one. Oh, that's why. It's because it's too once just great scad. <laughs> that is just typical that. I've spent, <laughs> I've spent an hour and a half steaming around trying to find bait and I've gone and put my anchor down where I want to fish and I've caught the bait straight away. It's just Murphy's <laughs> sod's law, that isn't it? If I'd have come straight here and anchor up, there'd have been no bait here. Anyway, yeah, we've got some bait now. Brilliant. Oh, hello. That's a fish, that. Oh, it's let go. No way. <laughs> that was that was probably a link. I just dropped this right there. Oh, that is painful that. What I'm using is I've got one of these cuttle eye jigs down there. And I've baited it with a little bit of squid. Now at the minute it feels like there's like a ras or a bream pecking at it. But that bite I had a minute ago, that was that was a big fish, that, that was a link. Can you keep an eye on that rod that I don't know if you can see properly. Yeah, just. Keep an eye on that rod, I'm gonna try and rig up a bream rig. God, that's <laughs> that's typical. Yeah, somewhat there pecking at it now. All I'm going to be doing is I'm just going to be fishing like a little two hook scratching rig with size one or size two hooks on it. Yeah, I think I've had my bait away. Size one or size two hooks. Little bits of squid to try and catch bream. I can't believe that fish come off. Try that out for size. <laughs> Literally just dropped it to the bottom. Ah, scuddy. Yeah, that's all this rig is. Just that little two hook scratching rig with bits of squid on. <laughs> oh, I wish I'd been paying attention. I was busy setting that other rod up. I cast that out and kind of left it and turned around and it was like... Whoosh. With any luck, we haven't spooked it and it's still down there somewhere. How? That is an absolute donkey of a scad. <laughs> what a monster. It's not what I'm after at all, but... Yeah. That is, <laughs> that is a bruiser of a scad. Scad, horse mackerel, they're covered in spikes all over them. That's what happens when you get so close to them. 
Typical, <laughs> absolutely typical. Fist around for ages and couldn't find any. Latched straight into a group of them. I won't be able to get away from them now. In a situation like this, all I'm going to have to do is I'm just going to have to send a scad down there. We'll fill it off a scad and send that down. Because I can't get through them. The jig's picked up a nice little male cuckoo ras. Makes a change from a scad. What I'm doing now, apart from dripping blood all over my boat, is I've got a fish locker conger rig. And I filleted off one of the scad just into a butterfly, like a flapper, and I'm going to send that down. Hopefully with that we'll pick out that bigger fish and we won't get pecked about by the scad. Ah, squall's just picked right up. I don't know if you notice that the wind's got a lot stronger and we have got a lot of rain coming. I'm going to have to put the camera away. Yes! <laughs> That's what I'm after. It's in the boat anyway. And a cuckoo ras. Yeah, I've turned the camera on real quick. <laughs> I don't know if you're going to be able to hear me. Because that squall's kicked right up. But yeah, that is... Calm down. That's a black bream. A delicious eating fish. And that's what I'm here for. These guys must just be thick down there. There must just be hundreds of them. Seabed must just be weak with them. Right. Now that, that squall's passed, well you can you can kind of still see it there, look, if you Yeah, when they come through, the wind always picks up really quick. It absolutely lashes it down for like 10 minutes and then it's gone again. Yeah, so. <laughs> I'll have another look at that. I'll show you that black bream again in a second. I've got it in a live bait tank. We also are getting a little bit of interest on that scad fillet down there, that scad flapper. Yeah. Rocking about all over the place, pouring down with rain, blowing a gale, and all going off all at once. I love it. <laughs> now, these are edible. Um, in the Mediterranean, the Spanish love eating them. I have, I've tried them and I don't like them as much as mackerel. All over them, all the way down their lateral line, down here, all the way at their tail, those are very, very sharp. And all of these have got a spike on them as well. I'll deal with that um, deal with that scad fillet now because there might be a little conger eel sat on it. Yeah, the rain's back, unfortunately. Yeah, some has been pecking at it because it's had half the fillet away. I'll freshen this bait up and send it back down. What's the bet it's another scad? Oh yeah, there we go. Right, let's get my life in order. I'm having camera issues. I'm playing a nice fish and I'm having camera issues.
That's a big eel, that. It's a big one and it's dark. Oh, easy, easy. He wants to be down there. I'll tell you what, I'll give him that. He wants to be down there. Yeah, that's a nice sized eel, that. I hope... I hope the camera caught the start of it, caught the strike. I'm having issues, camera keeps cutting out. Unfortunately, they don't like rainwater. Don't like seawater, they don't like any water. Tell you what, it's not a bad size one, that is it? Can't get the hook out. Ah, there we go. There's the hook. Yep, fish locker conger rig. They also work for ling. I'm trying I'm targeting ling. I'm trying to catch ling. Yeah, unfortunately, I'm struggling with camera issues. No camera. <laughs> I've been doing this for years. I've been doing this for a few years. And I have not found any camera that works properly. Don't matter if it's GoPro, if it's a DJI, if it's an Insta, if it's not, they're, they're all garbage. <laughs> yeah, um, I don't know if I don't know if I've got that on tape or not. I don't think I have. I hung down and struck into that fish. That fish really did fight at the start, and I turned around and the camera's bleeping and banging and uh, yeah. But we got it. That's the main thing. Given the conditions now, you wouldn't believe this was the same day, would you? Look at that. That's what it can be like at this time of year. It's all four seasons in one day. Anyway, now I've kind of got my life in order. I've got fresh bait sat down. I've got a little bite showing up on that rod. I'm just going to talk to you about that bream. Now I've had it sat in my live bait tank. That's a black bream. Even though it's not fully black, you do get some of them and they are really smoky black. This one is. Ah. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. That one's about at the size I'd like to take. That size and bigger, up to being about three pound at the size I would like to take. Between one and two and a half pound are perfect size for black bream in my opinion. And they are delicious. God, he's really. Add me up him then. As you can see, they're covered in spikes. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna. Uh, hopefully, I'll be able to fish out. We have got another hour of the tide in this direction, and then we'll have an hour, well, an hour or so of slack water, and then we'll try and put the anchor down on the other side of the reef and fish the back side of it. But yeah, that's what I'm hoping to catch. If I can catch three or four more of them, I will be over the moon. I would also, I would like a ling. I mean, that conger we caught there was a good one. It was a. A nice fish to catch, but I would rather have a ling. Conger aren't a very good eating fish. Whereas ling are delicious. Oh, there is a fish there. Come on, get out your hole. Now I know there's a fish there because I've saw it biting. I'm just gonna have to give it a couple of seconds to come out of its hole. We're coming, coming to slack water. So there's no real tide movement. So that fish has managed to sneak out, get hold of the bait, and move back into a hole without without registering too much of a bite. Give it a minute or two and see if it comes out. At least I know what it is. It's not going to be a ling. If it's gone in a hole like that, it's a conger. It's not a ling.
I reckon we've got about half an hour left here until the tide starts to spin round. And we'll pull the anchor up, go further up and reset. Yeah. When that bream come on, unfortunately, <laughs> when the bream was here, when all the scad were here as well. So all I was catching was the scad and I couldn't get through to the bream. But with any luck, fingers crossed, when the tide turns, they'll come back through. <laughs> they are just everywhere, them scad. I'm going to bring the anchor in and I'm going to move because we're just swinging about all over the spot now. Come to slack water and the wind's just throwing us around. There you go. I don't know if you saw when I was pulling it, it bobbed under the water and then it popped up. That was the anchor popping out. And then when it starts, it slides all the way to the end and then starts burying, that means it's reached the anchor. Now I'll just pull it in along the surface. Get the anchor to swing us round now. We're sat on the opposite side of where I was fishing. Like the mark where I'm fishing, if that's the when the tide was going that way, I was anchored up fishing onto that side of it. Now that the tide's turned, I'm anchored on this side, fishing onto this side of it. That's the theory anyway. It, it never quite works like it. It's like when you try to drift over a mark. You'll never get the same drift twice. There's always like a slight difference to it. But we'll just do our best. I did think it was one, but I wasn't going to say. Wouldn't be a session without a dogfish, would it? I did think when I hooked it, I thought, ah, I don't know what this is. Second dogfish. We, um, I have got a camera down on a seabed. If there's any decent footage on it, I'll put it in here now. This video is from the first location and was around 30 metres deep. Very, very rocky and due to the recent bad weather, the clarity is a little bit murky. The camera managed to drop right next to a bright yellow sponge. Around that, lots of poor cod, cuckoo wrasse, gold cine wrasse, and here are your scad. Hundreds of them. There's no wonder I couldn't get to the bottom for them, is there? In and around the scad, we have a female cuckoo wrasse. You can distinguish those from the males because the females have those three black marks near their tail. and a few inquisitive conger eels. The younger ones, the smaller eels, which we call straps, you can tell those apart because of the black edges to their fins. The second location was a little bit deeper, at around 40 metres deep. As I've said to folks before, unless the clarity is exceptional, there just isn't enough natural light down there. As it was, there wasn't much to see anyway. Clean seabed, the occasional eel and dogfish.
This is what I was talking about when I was saying about them squalls that come through. Like one's just blowing through now. It's gone from being lovely, it's gone from being lovely and sunny, like over there look, and flat calm, to just being lashing it down, white horses. I mean a big rainbow but yeah, wind's gone to being like 35 mile an hour from being 5 mile an hour. And all it's done is it's just swung the boat like 25 metres away from where I was. I managed to get two lines up, one of my lines has come snagged on the bottom. It's if the fishing had been absolutely amazing, I would have stuck it out, but it's not been. <laughs> I'm going to wait until this squall passes over and see if it calms off. If it doesn't, when it stops raining, I'm going to pull the anchor up and I'm going to go. Um, if, it, if it does calm off, I'm going to give it another hour after this. We'll just say, I'm not going to, I'm not going to get thrown around out here and lose loads of gear into the seabed for not a lot of fish. <laughs> yeah, I've given it an extra half an hour because it calmed right off and we've got another squall running through. Just gonna be one of them days. I saw it this morning when I was coming out. Um, hopefully, <laughs> I am really, really hopeful that the seabed cameras will have shown you some. In the three different places where I've anchored up, I've done a little bit of footage in each one. Hopefully, there'll be so much to show. The final location was shallower, at around 20 metres. Still not great clarity, but lots of wrasse and small fish. This clip is sped up, but you get to see just how much is actually going on down there, don't you? This next part really did make me laugh. You can see my scad flapper sat at the back and on the right, a cheeky lobster that fancies it for lunch. I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna tidy everything down, leave these baits to fish out, cause we've got, I don't know if you can see it coming. Yeah, we've got a horrible squall coming. And then we'll see you in a minute to pull the anchor. I've put the camera away because of the rain and I've just been fishing with that jig and I've been getting loads of bites and missing it and I thought I will get it and when I finally hooked it I thought ah oh, so this is fighting really strange it's heavy and yet it's still fighting and it's because it's two fish at the same time <laughs> there's two hooks on this jig and I've caught a male cuckoo wrasse and a big fat pouting as well <laughs> so yeah double hook up on the same jig with two different species Big old fat pouting on one side, the cuckoo wrasse on the other. <laughs> I, uh, all the way up I was thinking, this is heavy, but it's not fighting right. You know, like it's not, it had, it had a bit of a fight of a brain, but I thought it's a little bit too sluggish. And then I also thought, well, I thought, well, it can't be a pouting because it's, it's rasping too hard. Well, the reason why was because I was getting both, both fights, two different fights from two different fish at the same time. Why didn't you tell me? <laughs> Poor cod. I'm reluctant to. I'm reluctant to stick it out. I'm reluctant to get get my baits back down. I'm going to use up the little bits of bait that I've already cut because otherwise it'd be wasted. But I'm reluctant to give it any more time than I already have, just because it is going to be absolutely minging in about half an hour. I can see all the rain coming. And I want to get all wrapped up and get the anchor up before then. Well, that's it. I've had enough of that. <laughs> Would you believe it though? It's glorious now, isn't it? Swell's dropped right off to about a foot. Wind's dropped to about four or five mile an hour and the sun's out. Typical. Well, it was hard work today. Uh, I managed to find a couple of fish. I did get one bream. It, yeah. <laughs> it was a target species. I did get one of them, so I, I feel like I've justified myself. I really do hope the underwater footage has been okay. I hope you enjoyed joining me. All the very best. See you next time.